My name is Wilma. I am a collector. I have several collections and I've never been able to sort out or straighten up. Most of it is crafts. A lot of books that were my father's and some that were my grandfather's. Perfectly good, nice looking clothes. I'm Dean and Wilma's my mom. I moved down here to help her get her life in order. And the house is like worse than the Adams family's house. With the cobwebs hanging everywhere in that house. There's no way to move through the house without knocking something over. It's a landslide everywhere you go. I'm Carol, and Wilma is my mother. The house is just a sea of chaos. There's smelly stuff that's piled and piled and piled deep. My name is Ben, and Wilma is my mother. My mom's house now is almost like a garbage disposal. <laughs> It's just filthy, it's unlivable, it's unsafe, it's unhealthy. It structurally, it looks like it's about to cave in any moment. Termites have really got into it and ate a lot of the wood out. There's everything you can get in the house, the cats and dogs and large vermin, possums. My name is Bo Weathers and I'm a city code enforcement officer. We were alerted by her neighbors several times over the last few years. She had some, some complaints on the, the outer conditions of her property. Code enforcement came and talked to me about the yard initially. And they came in and they said the floor was soft. If you didn't know where to step, you, you could have gotten hurt. So we obtained the warrant, served it. We sent the letter to Wilma. Um, advising her that uh, we were, in fact, condemning her home. I wasn't given the criteria. They just put a notice that it was condemned. The house is one giant pile. I couldn't see over it. I mean, I was probably a little bit taller than the doorknob, and it was four feet, five feet high. I can remember the tunnels that we dug through the basement. Just all the stuff stacked, we just played in it. Kitchen was really dirty and there was not food in the house. My brother and I and my sister took care of each other and, and helped each other the best we could. They really didn't understand that that wasn't normal. We didn't want to be there. It just seemed so hopeless. Just to be there felt hopeless. I was scared of the house. I was scared of her. I used to pray to God every time I come down the street that she went home. My grandmother's house it was just a happy place for us. Me and Ben and Dean all spend all of our holidays there at that house, and summers, and Christmas, and Thanksgiving, Easter. It was immaculate. It was totally the opposite of what it is now. It's almost unbearable to go in the house now. I can't imagine driving down that road and not being able to turn that driveway and not, you know, Granny's house just not being there. Whether we can go in or not, you know, there's a chance it just might not ever be there. <clears throat> I guess that scares us more than anything. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Corey Chalmers, and I'm an extreme hoarding cleanup specialist. Wilma is facing an extremely serious crisis, and this is really your only chance to make this house at least presentable to them to even come in and do a final inspection on it. So you guys ready to do this? Let's do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. All right, let's get started. All right. We have our opening at least. All right. Yeah. Let's see what we got here. My angel was gonna keep that. I'm Dr. David Tolan. I'm a psychologist and an expert in hoarding disorder. How did you reach the decision to keep it? Because I usually keep my angels. I'm wondering how much sense it makes for you to hang on to symbols. Because things that, that one I will go out and buy again if you don't keep that one. 
and I feel invaded when people tell me that I cannot have. What's this about? Controlling my own life. Control. That's a big issue of for you, my isn't it? Life. Wilma's very reactive to people taking control of her things. Uh, and to the extent where she's almost paranoid every time anybody even touches something. Here's a whole box. It looks contaminated to me. I can't see that far. I, I cannot see that far. Can you trust what I'm telling you? I would rather you put it over here. And Are you let saying me you don't trust me? If that's why you want to interpret it, I'm yes. asking you. Everybody stuffed animals is trash, aren't they? Rat It's all caked to them. Ruined. 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 This one I keep for a pattern. Well, you can't take it with you when you die, Wilma. Or you gonna leave us with all this Nope. I'm not gonna leave y'all anything. I can't take it. I just... It infuriates me. She said wrap it. But that trash. Wilma is so consumed with her own anger, her own resentment of everybody and everything, that she's lost the ability to look at things objectively. Wilma, I think what's happening is you're lashing out at people. Sometimes when people are mean to me, I lash back. Your children must have been such a terrible disappointment to you. Yes. For you to have so much contempt toward them. Is that what we're dealing with? Probably we are. Have your children just been awful people? Sometimes they are when they're dealing with me. And they've just been a dis And I have given up my life, what I wanted to do in my life, to raise them. You resent them. That's probably about right. Can you even allow yourself to be loved by them? Probably not. Maybe you just want to cut them loose? Sometimes I think that would be best for everybody. You see your son crying? What does that do to you? Do you even care? Why are you guys here? <laughs> why are they here, Wilma? Tell me why your children are here. If they hate you so much, why are they here? Because I tell you what, I would have left a long time ago. You're pissing me off, and I'm not even related to you. Are you listening to me? Just one time. These were clean last It's Thursday. It's not an issue of whether they're clean. It's an issue of how much we can deal with before, what, 5 o'clock today. We need to get four rooms cleaned out. That's the issue, OK? I need you to think about that from that perspective in order for us to get anywhere. You I just realize show you me a say, little bit of respect. I, I, I really need that. And it's my being here not enough for you? No. She just says mean, hurtful things to make her point. Do you want these things on the floor here, is what you're saying? No, that's the, that's the wet stuff in that bag. You need another bag. That's the stuff the, that's wet. The wet stuff is getting laundered, so can't they be combined no. in one bag? No, put them in a separate bag. Why? Because I asked you to. This is just a question of just obey me? Instead of no. you hearing my logic and respecting me as a person? Yes. It's back to the control issue. She wants me to do what she said and I'm not going to do it. Well, how about this box of books here? Those are OK to donate. These are donate. OK. Can I get a got junk guy to take this box to the donate pile out front? Dean said throw this away. Is that right? I won't have any lamps at all if he throws all of my lamps away. He's not throwing all your lamps away. He's throwing the one in, in his room away. This, oh. Listen very carefully. The front part of that was Dean's. The back part is not Dean's, and it's never been Dean's. I don't know what part of the bedroom it came from, so I, please don't yell at me. All I know is Dean said throw it away. Reader's Digest. Emily marriage and parenthood. Sure I doubt neither. Look at the gap in those boards there. This whole wall is going out, so it's not resting on anything, and all the wood underneath here is completely rotted out. We removed three dump trucks full of trash. 
the house is still probably 60, 70 percent full, and we've unraveled the, the severe damage to it. There's just nothing left. It's just falling apart. All from the load of all this stuff. This is a no-win situation for him. This house is uninhabitable. The reality is that they're going to tear it down. I mean, over, done. Not a bright outlook for the future. If I pushed on this wall, it would go down. Look. That would come down on top of us. We'd be messed up. Wilma would rather be homeless than live with her kids. I have never wanted to live with them. I don't want them living with me. I'd rather be elsewhere by myself. I don't know why your kids haven't written her off, but they haven't. And I think that says something powerful about them. But I don't know if they're ever going to have a normal relationship with Wilma. I guess I've got to come to terms that I'll never have that affection or love from her. You know, I've always wanted it, and I never gave up hope on it. And now I'm, you know, I'm at that point. And that hurts. It really hurts. a fan of hoarders and subscribe to A&E for more videos and click the links around me to watch more.